Um, okay, so this is a very long article. Um, it's by a publication I've never heard of called Reality's Last Stand. I did read through it. It's very fascinating. Uh, so what happened is the woman that you're looking at is a mother. She has a daughter. Her daughter is 17, and her daughter has cut off all contact with her because she refuses to accept her new gender identity as a man. Um, the daughter went behind her back, uh, kissed up to uh, her now ex-husband. Her ex-husband encouraged the transition, started using he, him pronouns, and basically this little girl has gotten her tits cut off, um, I think was in was on testosterone. It was basically she was she was chewed up by the system, um, and because she did not conform to the identity, she was removed from her daughter's life. And so her mother decided, um, let's see how broken the system is. So after a routine OBGYN um, visit, she asked her OBGYN. Uh, I'm feeling gender non-conforming or I have some, she opened up with a very plain, I have some, I'm, I'm not sure if my gender identity is correct. And she says that every step of the way, the medical professionals that she spoke to seemed giddy and enthusiastic um, with unbridled support the entire step of the way. And she mentioned how she was told while dealing with her daughter that the medical system is safe and effective and how there are checks and balances, how nobody's just rushed through these things, you know, willy nilly. They take it very seriously and their psychological exams and, you know, it's all very by the numbers. However, she, when she went through the system, <clears throat> she was repeatedly told by doctors um, that they would not gatekeep her from her decisions. So at no point would they ever question her at all. Like they, they even apologized for the the psych eval and said explicitly, we're sorry that this seems very gatekeepy. We're not really going to challenge you on, on what you believe about yourself. And she was able to get queued up for a mastectomy um, and was able to get her insurance to pay it. How, uh, so for $100, they would remove both of her breasts. Um, and she was able to get this done in no time at all. She backed out of the surgery at the last second. So they got, they confirmed that they canceled it. Um, but then she decided in her email, she said, Hey, you know, sorry, I got uh, cold feet on the top surgery, but that's because what I really want is a phalloplasty. I want a fake penis. And they, um, said, Oh, sure. <laughs> and they got her scheduled to have, they even gave her like a little, um, like an engineer's triangle. I'll show you this. It's in the article here. Um, Oh, is this it? This. They gave her like a little engineering triangle to make her... Oh, this is for the breast. Uh, this is for flatness, nipple sensation, and scarring. You have to like pick your poison. Do you want it to be extra flat? Do you want your nipples to have any sensitivity? Or do you want to reduce scarring? So you have to like pick which which perk you want. You're, like, you're trying to like... It's. I mean, this is like a video game. Everyone says that transhumanism is like a, a video game. Well, here you go. You have to, you get your engineering triangle, like um, mage, archer, knight, and runescape. And you have to pick which one you want to go with. Uh, but then you can deck that out. You can bedazzle it however you want. And then um, they gave her, so, oh, this one. So this is the decision-making considerations for lower surgery. They never refer to this as a vagina a vagina, um, penis scrotal flap vaginoplasty, which is what the actual name is because penis scrotal flap vaginoplasty sounds horrific and is a word that is etched into my memory. I can't remember my birthday or my age most days, but I can recall penis scrotal, scrotal flap vaginoplasty off the top of my head like it's nothing. Um, so when they're giving you your bottom surgery in quotes or lower surgery or penis scrotal flat vaginoplasty surgery, not in quotes, literally what it is, uh, you can choose what your perks are. Um, <clears throat> oh, you're right. Penis scrotal flat vaginoplasty is for male to females. It's just a fun word. This is just a phalloplasty. This is just a, um, this is the other way around. This is the part where they take the, the meat, they take your meat and they stitch it together. And for fun, they put a little tube in it. And then you, you can take your hand and go 
and pump that thing up so it can look like an erection. And then they even have like one of those dragon dildo things where you can put like fake cum in it and then shoot fake cum out of your fake penis. <laughs> After you pump it up like a little balloon. <laughs> um, so when they when they when they decide to do this, the complication rate one hundred percent. Safe and effective phalloplasty. Please, don't 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 get it twisted. Uh, get it twisted. Get it twisted, idiots. Gamble, idiots. Okay, let's listen to some considerations for our phalloplasty. Appearance. Do you want it to be thick boy? Do you want it to be a long boy? Um, how do you consider about your donor site scar? Because you got to remember, when you're taking a big chunk of your schmeat, you're like a little girl and you're trying to make a big dongus out of something. Like that. It's going to leave a scar, right? You're going to have this big uh, like ditch in your thigh. Uh, so keep in mind, you can get a bigger... That's a real Sophie's choice. Do you want a bigger penis or do you want to have a gigantic gash carved into your thigh because remember the more schmeat you take the less schmeat is going to be left there uh circumstance <laughs> complications or risks i love how the biggest one is the complications and risks circle i would love it if the diagram had to like compensate for the size of the complications and risks one so it's just like the it's just like the bigger circle it's like how uh it's it's like in guy talk it's like how one one ball is bigger than the other right it's like this ball is just a little bit bigger than the rest <laughs> um functions do you want to stand to pee do you want to have a little pump so you can shoot <laughs> so you can so you can stand up and like like shoot a syringe into your taint and then ejaculate that way so you can simulate sex eggs uh fertility do you actually do you want any ovaries left or, or are we gonna just like get rid of all that shit we're gonna throw that into the biomass recycler uh, complications and risks. And this is the largest ball of this. Uh, this person opted for three testicles. That's why there's three circles. Uh, urethral lengthening. So keep in mind, I guess if you want to stand to pee, I guess you can. I guess because this is all fake bullshit, and your schmeat can go any which way. We can keep your female urethra as it is, and you can just lift your dongish schmeat up, and you can like pee sitting down. But if you want to stand and pee, we'll have to lengthen your urethral. Now, all the medical documents that we have regarding fucking with someone's urethra comes from Dr. Mengele, but he was German, and you know German doctors are very good. Um, so keep in mind, you might get infections. It might go up your urethra. It might enter into your kidneys and then propagate throughout your entire body and kill you. That's a complication that happens with urethral lengthening. It might get a narrow urethra. You know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> um graft or fallow flap or fallow i wish i knew what the different what is okay that's a great bing being ai i'm gonna need you right here uh being ai uh let's see in plastic surgery what is the difference between a graft and a flap question mark let's see what bing has to say uh, the difference between a graft and a flap lies in the blood supply. A graft is composed of the same tissue type, such as skin, fat, tendon, bone, or nerve. It lacks its own blood supply and relies on the vascularized bed at the recipient site. Commonly used for extensive skin damage like burns, large skin excisions, or poorly healing ulcerating lesions. There are two types of skin grafts, split skin thick. Thick split skin thickness skin graft contains only the epidermis or the full thickness skin graft. Now, if I'm, I mean, if I'm trying to get a phalloplasty, I want that full thickness skin graft. Includes the entire dermis, including hair follicles. Might want to laser that because I don't want to. No, yeah, mm, I do want the full thickness, but I don't want the hair. I don't want a hairy Sasquatch penis. Okay, that doesn't sound good. That doesn't sound good to me. But then we have okay let's compare we're doing a diagram here what's what's the flap what's the fallow flap being says a flap is a type of auto transplantation of tissue unlike a graft a flap retains its original blood supply during transfer that's good larger amounts of tissue can be used including muscle if needed 
Flaps are suitable for more complex reconstructions, but they require a good vascular bed for survival. In summary, while both grafts and flaps can consist of the same tissue types, the key distinction lies in their blood supply. Grafts lack it, whereas flaps have their own vascular support. So I assume that the consideration there is that if you're going to take the, the, the flap, you're going to remove your own blood supply from your thigh, that's going to be a huge, huge, like if you want to do a graft, you'll have a less con uh, convincing and possibly a hairy phallus. But if you go for the flap, you're going to be ripping out your own vascular system um, and transplanting that. And then if that goes, if that's fucked, then you're just fucked. It's, you know, you're, you're losing a part of your body that you can't regrow. Uh, implants. So do you want, do you want the sh 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 pump? If you want the pump, you gotta let us know before we do this. We can't add the pump in later. That's all that's fucked up. We, we gotta get the, we gotta pre-order the pump. The pump comes, the, we don't keep the pump in stock. We gotta pre-order it from bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, and unresolved dysphoria. So keep in mind, I'm glad they are upfront with this. Keep in mind, we might Remove a chunk of your thigh, put it in, put the pump in from the bad dragon, take the bad dragon fa fake semen syringe and, and put the little um, input hole on your taint and you still might be unhappy. We might go through all of this. We might charge your insurance half a million dollars for this and you might still hate it and you might kill yourself. Just letting you know. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> I think this is worse than Mengele. Mengele did some fucked up shit, but this is pretty bad. Is this a, is this better or is this more? Okay, let's not say better or worse. Is this less or more ethical than a non-consensual vivisection? I'm being real. Is is a non-consensual vivisection um, a less or more ethical thing than convincing someone they want someone this shit? Can we do a vote? Okay, hold, hold up. Uh... Poll is a phalloplasty, voluntary phalloplasty, more or less ethical than non consensual vivisections. Okay. This is a very controversial, this is probably the, the most dumbass thing I've ever typed. <laughs> um, more ethical or less ethical? Vote one. If you believe that a voluntary phalloplasty is more ethical than non-consensual vivisection, vote two. If you think that voluntary phalloplasty is less ethical than non-consensual vivisections. Will people even be able to interpret the complex vernacular that I have employed with this poll to, to vote in it? We will see. Vivisection at least serves a purpose. That's what I'm thinking. There's at least some medical science. You know, there's a lot of medical shit that we learn because of uh, Mengele and because of the Nazi experiments. That's what. Those are some of the things that we p paper clipped in and we don't talk about. Same with Japan, actually, because they did a, uh, you know, as bad as Mengele was, the Japanese on average, like the average Japanese doctor. Okay, this is like a mean template, like the worst, the worst nazi scientist doctor and then you have mangala and then you have like most ethical japanese doctor and it's it's just like the like a japanese chad with like the 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 screeching emo music on top of it mangala would fucking flinch if he saw what the japanese did all right we have close to 100 votes in um 30% of people say that a voluntary phalloplasty is more ethical, but 70% uh, of people said that it is less ethical. We may need, uh, can I do input on a different chat? Let's see. It does. Less ethical. Okay, great. Excellent poll. Um, but if you want to read it, it's on uh, Reality Last Reality's Last Stand. It's by Beth Bourne. It's very interesting. Um, she was able to get queued up for this. All the emails are there. Everything is there. If you want to see how easy it is for someone to, and unquestioning it is for someone to get queued up for this shit. Oh, here you fucking go. Um, will it change any minds? No, because nobody's mind ever changes.
Thanks for watching the script. This is Willow. Remember to like and subscribe.